Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today we are going to be talking all about hair training or more specifically, why hair training is not real. If you keep up with all of my videos, you're probably not really that surprised to hear me say that, but if you don't, you may be wondering why I'm saying that when I used to talk about hair training when I first started my channel. And the simple answer to that is that I have learned a lot since then. I really have poured myself into both hair care and skincare research over the past several years. And in doing that, I have learned that there are certain things like hair training that I thought were true that I have now learned are absolutely not. And when I think back on what I used to think about hair training and the tips that I used to share, it's really clear to me actually why I thought that hair training was real because I was able to transition from washing my hair every single day to only washing it once a week. But contrary to what I thought at the time, it's not because I was training my scalp to produce less oil. It's because I was training myself. So I will of course be explaining my thought process behind that in today's video, as well as all of the information that I have uncovered in researching that really does debunk the myth that is hair training once and for all. And my purpose in making this video is really just to give you the information that you need to make a more educated decision on a hair washing cadence that actually works for you and your scalp needs. I'm nervous because I know people get really sensitive about this topic, but at the same time, I'm super excited to finally share all the information that I have found. So let's just dive on into it. All right, let's just quickly kick off this video by talking about sebum. So sebum is the oily substance that makes our scalp look oily or greasy, and it is actually produced by little glands attached to our hair follicles called sebaceous glands. So how you can kind of think about the process by which our hair starts to look greasy or oily is that after we wash our hair and remove any existing sebum, our hair follicles begin to fill up with sebum until regulation by surface tension occurs. I found several different definitions of surface tension, but the more that I read, the more I started to feel confused about how that actually regulate sebum excretion. So there's one definition that I think is the clearest, or at least it was for me as it relates to this topic that I wanted to read to hopefully clarify things for you guys. So surface tension is a force that acts to reduce the surface area of a liquid. And a helpful visual for me to think about is a droplet of water on a leaf. Surface tension is the force that holds those water molecules together and allows them to actually form that droplet so that the water isn't just like spread all over the leaf. So bringing that back to sebum, that means that at a certain point, because of the force that is surface tension, sebum stops excreting because it can't continue to cover more and more surface area. And there are actually several different factors that impact the amount of sebum that we produce, including things like hormones, diet, and age. As you could probably guess, when we enter puberty is when sebum production really starts to ramp up and it increases until it hits a maximum and then eventually starts to decrease with age. The composition of our sebum also does vary as well, depending on the life stage that we're in. Something else that is key to know about sebum production is that our sebaceous glands produce sebum at continuous outputs. So that means that sebum production, which again is kind of governed by age, diet, hormones, things like that, happens at a constant rate. And that is exactly where the hair training argument really starts to fall apart. Because now that we know that our bodies are basically in charge of the amount of sebum that we produce, and that sebum excretion is constant and regulated by surface tension, that does not really leave room in the equation for shampoo to manipulate any of that. And that's because it can't. And one of the sources that I used to inform this video, which will be listed below, of course, as always with all the sources that I used, it specifically says anionic surfactants, which are the primary cleansing agents in shampoo, do not stimulate the rate of refattening, meaning they do not stimulate the rate at which our hair follicles fill up with sebum or our sebaceous glands produce that sebum. There are a few ingredients that have actually been shown to either increase or decrease the amount of sebum that our sebaceous glands produce, but they are very specific anti-dandruff ingredients that you don't just find in any average shampoo. So those ingredients are zinc perithione, ketoconazole, and selenium sulfide. Unless you have a shampoo that contains those ingredients, shampoo does not have the ability to speed up the rate at which your sebaceous glands work or control the amount of sebum that your sebaceous glands produce. 
just doesn't. However, even though we don't have control over sebum production, we still do have control over the amount of sebum that's on our scalp at any given moment, and that is through sebum removal. So I wanted to break down a few different aspects of this because I think that they're really helpful in understanding why hair training has really turned into the beast that it has as far as being a widespread myth. So the most well-known way to remove sebum from the scalp is by cleaning the scalp with shampoo. So let's talk about how shampoo impacts sebum removal on wash day. Shampoos, of course, are not all considered to be equal. On the one hand, we have deep cleansing shampoos that contain antibiotic surfactants like sulfates that do a really great job at removing oil and dirt and buildup. But on the other hand, we have extra gentle shampoos that don't contain any deep cleansing ingredients that not only don't do a great job at removing sebum, but that can also leave residue behind on the hair, especially if they're really creamy and conditioning. And something that I think is important to note about this that I feel like not a lot of people realize is that the type of shampoo that you're using not only has a direct impact on how clean your scalp and hair look and feel right after washing or even a week after washing, but it also impacts how easy your hair is to clean in future washes. When sebum is left on the hair for long periods of time and not cleansed off with a shampoo, it can actually undergo irreversible chemical changes that make it really difficult to remove. Obviously that is on the more extreme end of things, so even when that's not happening, even small amounts of sebum and buildup that are left behind on the hair can have a really big cumulative effect on the hair and make it that much more difficult for you to get a proper clean in the future. And not only is the type of shampoo that you're using important, but the way that you're using that shampoo is very important as well. There actually is such a thing as a proper shampoo technique, and that does not include just slapping shampoo on the outside of your head and massaging it around for a few seconds before rinsing. I do have an entire video where I walk you through my in-depth shampoo process, so to spare those of you that have already watched that, I won't repeat any of that here. I'll just list that video below if you would like more tips on how to get the most out of your shampoo on wash day. But the way that you massage shampoo into your scalp and the way that you wet and rinse your hair have a huge impact on how clean your hair looks and feels after washing. The other thing that impacts how clean or greasy your hair looks on wash day has nothing to do with how you wash your hair, the products that you're using, but everything to do with how you dry your hair. And this blew my mind when I learned it because if you watched my last wash day styling routine, you may remember that I was talking about how I feel like my hair always just looks so much greasier when I let it air dry versus when I blow dry it. I didn't ever think that I would actually find science to prove that theory to be true, but I did. So it turns out that the reason why that's true is because our hair actually loses sebum at a slower rate than we air dry it versus when we blow dry it, it loses sebum at a faster rate. So even though the way that you dry your hair is not going to change the amount of sebum that your sebaceous glands produce, if you have a super oily scalp, that may be something that actually helps you out a little bit. Blow drying instead of air drying. And then aside from wash day related activities, the last thing that I will talk about as it relates to sebum removal is mechanical manipulation. Mechanical manipulation like styling and grooming have a much bigger impact on the amount of sebum that's on the hair than I think most people realize. So in one of my sources, it discussed how in a period of four days after washing our hair, 60 to 70% of the sebum produced since the last wash is removed from our hair as a result of mechanical manipulation from things like brushing our hair and rubbing it against objects like pillows or hats. And even though it totally makes sense when I think about it, that still again kind of blew my mind to learn because I feel like this is a major reason why we have convinced ourselves that hair training works because we're actually removing the sebum from ourselves the further away we get from our last wash. Okay, that is all the science that I wanted to share, and I know that that's a lot of information to take in all at once, but there's a couple more things that I want to discuss because I have shared bits and pieces of this on TikTok and Reels, and whenever I do, I always see comments asking things like, okay, then how did hair training work for me? So I wanted to share my thoughts on that. For me personally, I feel like my hair training journey was more a journey of me figuring out how to take better care of my hair and testing out new products that would allow me to comfortably go longer between washes. So I started to use clarifying shampoos and rinses in my wash day routine. I started to be meticulous about the way that I shampooed my hair, including things like shampooing twice instead of only just once. I started to test out different dry shampoos and find ones that I really liked 
that didn't make my hair look and feel just gunky and dirty. And I know that I definitely brush my hair every day, but I remember that I definitely switched from just like a normal plastic hairbrush to the wet brush, which contains softer boar bristles. And I don't have any science to prove this, but I feel like those softer bristles have to pick up more sebum than just regular plastic bristles. I put money on that. And then on top of all of that, I figured out some ways to kind of deal with the effects of washing my hair less. So I look back on that now and I see very clearly why hair training seemed to work for me. I trained myself to take better care of my hair, to wash my hair properly, and also to get used to the feeling of dirty hair. That's just the truth. All right, now that I have given you my final thoughts on hair training, I want to finish up the video by answering a question that I already know some of you were thinking. And that question is, okay, now what? Do I wash my hair every day? My answer to that is probably a little bit annoying to hear, but it really is true. And that is that you have to do what works best for you and your scalp, knowing that what works best for you is not always going to be what works best for somebody else. If you have a best friend who washes her hair every two weeks and she has a really, really dry scalp, that's probably not going to work well for you if you have an incredibly oily scalp that is susceptible to getting really itchy. Scalp health is very important for hair health. There's definitely no doubt about that. But on the other hand, wash day related activities, exposing our hair to that water, heat styling, still do damage our hair as well. So I think that the best approach is one that allows you to find kind of a middle ground if you're able to do so comfortably. If you wash your hair every single day and you cannot wash your hair any less without experiencing side effects like intense itching and flakes and discomfort, or maybe you're just someone who does not like the look and feel of greasy hair, then by all means wash your hair every single day because that is what works best for you. But if you're someone that does like to go longer between washes, you don't have any scalp discomfort, you don't mind a little dry shampoo, maybe you can't fathom adding another wash day routine to your week, I feel that, then stick with that as long as that continues to be what works best for you. As much as I wish there was some sort of science that told us an exact washing frequency that allowed us to kind of optimize scalp health and not have an unhealthy scalp from not washing enough, but also optimize hair health from not overdoing it from wash day related activities, as much as I wish that it doesn't exist, but hopefully that helps to make you feel better that it really just depends on your specific scalp needs. But either way, whether you're someone that washes every day or just once a week, or maybe somewhere in between, I would always recommend taking steps to protect the health of your hair on wash day. Again, knowing that there are several things that can cause damage. So if you want more tips there, I'm going to list my wash day routine below. I actually show you my wash day process in the shower, but we're not walking through all of that here today because that's enough of that. That's a wrap on this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend that you think would enjoy my content. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching. I love you guys so freaking much. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.